The research project that we're running here from the School of Business, Economics and Law includes researchers both from logistics, from finance and from law. Uh, we also have a number of participating companies including SKF, DB Schenker, Fiata and uh, Danske Bank. And together we are all striving to understand how supply chain finance practices can evolve and implicate the different actors in the supply chain. So supply chain finance is one of those concepts that is inherently difficult to uh, define. There has been a lot of different definitions proposed out there and uh, somehow it's got to do with optimizing the financial flows in the supply chain. This could be done by reducing information asymmetries, it could be done by increasing efficiency or competition. Regardless of how you define the concept of supply chain finance, it is uh, an idea about focusing on the flows throughout the supply chain. So it's both the physical flows, the financial flows and the informational flows. And these can be visualized through different platform solutions and different actors within the supply chain. Within this uh, project that we uh, uh, are running here at the School of Business, Economics and Law in Gothenburg, uh, the focus is on the actual actors. So when we introduce new solutions to optimize and visualize the flows in the supply chains, how will that impact the different actors, the logistic service providers, the banks and the buyers and suppliers? And not only the tier one suppliers, but actually the suppliers, suppliers and the suppliers, suppliers, suppliers. So the tier two, the tier three and the tier four suppliers, which are all going to be implicated if we take a complete supply chain focus. Now my focus uh, in this investigation is mainly on the private law aspects of supply chain finance, uh, which starts with paperless trade, how paperless trade can facilitate uh, supply chain finance, how uh, changes in uh, security interest laws uh, can uh, create better environment for uh, rolling out supply chain finance services, and how supply chain finance can be uh, provided to small and medium enterprises uh, across uh, jurisdictions. Uh, so in this uh, project uh, we had to uh, collaborate uh, with other disciplines uh, because as the name suggests supply chain uh, finance it has got a logistics element to it and a finance element to it and the legal element is more of a enabler. Now, when we are looking at the legal aspects of this project, we are trying to uh, take a more supply chain view rather than just focusing on particular solutions. So we are looking at uh, tier one, tier two, tier three, and tier four suppliers, and how various laws of various jurisdictions can uh, facilitate all the various tiers of suppliers so that they can also have the benefit of these new financing techniques which are being uh, created through better use of technology. In the context of the uh, supply chain finance project, my contribution is very much looking at the public international law um, initiatives contribution in uh, actually enhancing visibility of supply chains. Uh, particularly all actors involved in supply chains. Um, and this is critical because visibility can actually increase chances uh, to access finance. I focused very much on the trade facilitation agreement, uh, the, the World Trade Organization Trade Facilitation Agreement and its contribution uh, towards single windows establishment across jurisdictions. In the past year, we have developed a concept called International Single Window Environment, which is conceived as an electronic data interchange channel, um, which provides the possibility of uh, exchanging information between various actors involved, all feeding into the concept and uh, concept of uh, visibility. The overall goal of this particular research project is to increase the competitiveness of uh, the transport sector in Sweden. So in that sense, what we are doing here is trying to understand how different actors are implicated by the supply chain finance uh, solutions out there.
but also how efficiency can be increased and how we can bring that type of efficiency to Swedish firms.